you on this way. All right, is that, okay, that is recording. Okay, so I'll back it up. Be an all-in part-time coach. So um, this is a part-time power hour. So this is an example of something that you should be doing. I used to do this in an hour period after work. That's what worked for me. Now that I have Michelle, the hours after work are super, super busy up until like 8.30 when she falls asleep finally. Um, but at nine o'clock, I often don't feel like starting a power hour, right? That's kind of when I want to start to veg out. Maybe I'll do some like extra activities, but I'm probably not going to be doing these power hour type activities. So I always want to make sure that when I go into my weekly power hour, I have the right mindset and intentions. And if you guys watched my live video, I've struggled a lot with personal development over the past few years because I felt like I had to like to read to be successful at personal development. And I had a really hard time admitting to myself that I don't like to read. I don't know. I felt like it made me not smart. Like I was like, oh, I must be stupid because I don't like to read. Hopefully I don't think I'm stupid because I don't like to read. I'm just throwing that out <laughs> into the universe. Um, I've discovered audiobooks and it took me six years to discover audiobooks. And I've fallen in love again with personal development because I was really struggling that. I'm currently reading Fear is Your Homegirl. I'm doing a mentorship right now. Homeboy, homeboy, sorry, Fear is my homeboy. I'm doing a mentorship right now. And we've discovered that like my big holdback is fear. Um, and so I am, I'm digging into that and I'm loving it. Um, I do a Fit Tip Friday newsletter every single Friday. So I send that out through the back office. If you go to like manage, I think it's manage and then send an email. You can send an email to all of your customers. I usually take something from the Beachbody blog, put my little spin on it and send it out. I don't make it super um, time intensive. It takes me probably 10 minutes to send that out every Friday. I do a blog post once a week, usually a spin on something I sent to the Beachbody blog. Although on my personal blog, I write the post itself or I'll take a post that I did for social media and lengthen it and make it more of a blog post. I do an Instagram live at least once a week. Um, Instagram live has not been working lately. My reels actually don't work either. And I'm not sure why, but my goal is to do it once a week um, as part of my, my, my um, social media strategy. And I do a Facebook live once a week. That's not necessarily about business. I do a lot of Facebook lives with Michelle. We do cooking and baking and all of that sort of stuff. But I just think it's really important because Facebook and Instagram like when you use all of their tools and it helps with the algorithm. And then the last thing that I always do, and this goes kind of along with number one, is that I want to get, because I want to get my mindset right, I don't want to sit around and come up with excuses and complaints as to why I can't be successful. I just simply say, okay, these are the things I'm going to do throughout the week, and this is what I do. So on top of these weekly things, right, on top of the no excuses and the blog and the power hour and all of these things that I do in my week, and you can simply take a checkbox and check them off. The daily things that I do is I add three to five new people to my network each day. So that could be Instagram, that could be Facebook, combination of the both, but that's something that I do. I return all of my messages. I don't go to bed with open messages for the day on a regular basis. Yes, occasionally, like I'm tired and I don't deal with it, but I try to get back to everyone by the end of the day. Um, so I do one to two Facebook posts a day. I don't know why this is 2019, um, but 2021, I have this goal of, I want to breadcrumb coaching more. So I'm kind of struggling with um, adding more people to the team, because I think that the opportunity combined with the fitness is really the best value that I can give people and helping people earn an income, get a discount and see the results that they want. So not necessarily more calls to actions about coaching, but more like dropping them little hints in, in posts, right? It's been extra hard. Um, in 2020, because we didn't have any live events. And I feel like those events really pull people in and excite people because the energy there is just amazing. But I'm going to figure it out this year. I invite two to three people daily to my next group. And I always have a group starting on the calendar. And I will review kind of what that looks like and how you guys can utilize it as well. I follow up. I start to form new relationships with people that interact with me. So I'll reach out, I'll ask them questions. Um, just start to get to know them. I make it a rule not to just invite and reach out to people arbitrarily. Like I want to talk to people that I have a genuine interest in getting to know. I post on the team page um, at least once a day. Sometimes I share something. Sometimes I go in there and I post something raw. Um, either way, I try to share some value in the team page. 
I aim for 10 Instagram and Facebook stories a day and I aim for a lot of interaction. So I try to do polls and questions and things that would get a rise out of people. Um, that uh, Dottie saw it yesterday, but there was some guy that, I didn't even know you could do this. You can respond on Venmo to like people's transactions. And I've been doing this Venmo challenge for these local restaurants and some guy like asked me if I wanted to be his sugar baby for $5,000 a week or some crap. And, <laughs> and I like posted the screenshot of my stories because I was hilarious and I got a lot of people message me about it. So stuff like that is really funny. Um, and this is what I do every single day. I focus on this Monday through Friday at a minimum. And I usually add in Saturdays. Sundays, I don't do a ton with the business. It's also my workout rest day. That's what works for me. Um, and I really focus on this every single day. It's the consistency that's helped build my business. On top of this, I read and listen to personal development in some way, shape, or form. Like I said, I've discovered audiobooks, and now I feel like I'm enjoying PD again, and it's not a chore. And then I work on me, and I lead by example every single day. I do my workout. I drink my psychology. I always have my energized and I work on my business daily. So the best thing you can do as a leader is to show people what you're doing in order to help them along. Okay, so this is how I lay out my calendar. And this calendar um, is always pinned to the top of the group in the coaches page. You do not need to use this calendar, but if you ever feel like you're struggling to figure out what to invite to, um, you know, or, or what you should be talking about, this is how I lay out my month. January, I'll tell you, was backwards. So usually the first Monday of the month, we have a free group. And then the second Monday of the month, I invite to a challenge group. But because of the nine-week control free launch, it was first Monday of the month challenge group and then the free group. And then towards the end of the week, so going on right now, is our what is coaching group. Um, and there's also a Google Doc that's like paired to this in the team page. So you can see all the groups. I personally only run three groups, like on a regular basis. So I have our team page. I have the free group, um, which is basically for people that aren't ready to commit to a program yet, but they're interested in learning more. Um, and they have a free account with me. And then I have the paid group, which is for people that are doing something beach body. So they bought a challenge pack, they bought Shakeology, they bought BOD, they have performance, they have a nutrition plan, they have something beach body. And that group is really beach body focused. So in the free group, I do a challenge every single month. And in the paid group, I kind of have a start date, but it's a very soft start, right? I can add people throughout the month, but having these groups to focus on allows me to really focus my inviting and my posts through the week. So Leading up to the free group, I'm going to talk about the free group. I'm going to be adding to the free group. I'm going to be inviting to the free group. I'm going to be breadcrumbing about the free group. I'm going to be doing a free group of my stories. And then it's going to start. And then I'm going to start to talk about the challenge group. And the reason I usually do it in that order, like I said, January was reversed. But the reason I usually do it in that order is because I can look at the free group and say like, okay, these people have um, been really active in the free group. I think it would be great to, they'd be great in a challenge group or they've already started to express interest so that I can get them in the challenge group and then that starts. And then I can start to talk about what's going on with our what is coaching group. Oftentimes, if there's two week break, like in this case between the, the challenge group and the what is coaching group, I'll still talk about the challenge group for the first week and then I'll switch gears. But I just make sure that I always have something that I can be inviting to and I can stay focused on. And that's helped me a ton with my time management. Um, so a lot of people are like, well, you talk a ton about inviting, inviting people, talking to people, you've got all these groups going on. You have to just have the conversation. So a really good way to start conversations are compliment, comment, question. I love those blue shoes. They look great on you. Where did you get them? Something that simple. Always use their name. Always. Babe, hon. People feel like that's canned. You can also use voice messages. That's a great way to go as well. Just start the conversation and start talking to these people. So here's um, some social media posts, um, kind of a planner, if you will, if you have no idea what to post about, right? The ones in bold, I feel like are the most common, but for themes, but you can use any of these. And I'm more than happy to post, like I said, this presentation in the coach page so you guys can have it. 
And this one was the most helpful for me because I'm like, what the hell do I put in my stories? People don't care, but they really do care. <laughs> they want to know what you're doing. So morning routine, curiosity, your workout, nutrition tips. I often share like my meals, lifestyle, coaching lifestyle, calls to action, a customer testimonial. Even if you, even if you have a customer and they're not ready to share their results publicly, you can always like black out their face and share it, a tip or a hack, um, any business shout out you have, welcomes, and always getting on camera and talking is really key to like showcase how awesome you are and that you're a real human and not a bot. Okay, so that was, you know, my kind of basics on time management and how I organize myself and make sure that I'm staying on track. Um, these are my top five types of time management tips. So have a plan and stick to it. You guys should know what's starting for you on Monday in the first, first Monday in February and the second Monday in February and the third and the fourth or however you're organizing your month, whether you're following the team calendar or you're following your own, you have to have a plan. You have to. That is the only way you're going to be able to stay organized and continually invite. You want to be doing this every day every day, every day, every day. It's the consistency that's gonna build this business. And it doesn't take a lot of time, right? 30, 45, 60 minutes. Tonight, my time's a little bit longer because I already did my work and now I'm spending 60 minutes with you all. So a little bit extra every once in a while, I would say I do about probably 10 hours a week. So a couple, couple days a week, I do a little bit more. I put the necessary before the fun always. So if you love doing stories and you hate inviting people, do the invites first, do the stories after. Um, if you struggle with something, outsource it, you know, either, and you don't have to do paid outsourcing, right? Like if you need some sort of free group outline, grab, ask someone if they have one on the team or go into our team Google Docs and grab one. Like you do not have to do this work on your own, especially the time consuming work. Um, if you're a newer coach and you need a group, talk to your coach about, um, you know, joining their challenge group and getting involved there. I always recommend that you take your hardships and turn them into success. You've got to be continually sharing about you and your story and what makes you different. You don't want to be a beach body bot. You don't want to sound like a commercial. You want to share more authentically about yourself and staying focused on that is gonna help you with your time management. And the last, guys, scrolling's not working. If you're scrolling, you're not doing anything. I mean, listen, I scroll. And Whitney knows I scroll because she gets my random TikToks at one in the morning. And that is okay. You are, let me be clear, you are allowed to scroll, you are allowed to have fun on social media, but don't say, oh, I worked for three hours tonight when you scrolled. Then I'd be working a lot more than 10 hours a week, right? So I will, I will scroll. I will do what I want to do. And one thing I heard today, actually, in my class at MIT today, was this girl, when she was coming on and talking about this stuff, she said she loves social media and she uses it to build her business. I think that's, she was like a guest speaker in the course. She said she has one platform that she uses for just fun. She doesn't use it to build her business. And I was like, that's TikTok for me. If you follow me on TikTok, I don't do anything business on there. I just have fun with it. And I like it that way. And it made me like kind of, it's helped me fall back in love with social media because at a time when it's hard to be on social, right? Because people can be so negative and there are some crazies out there as we know lately, right? Um, it's really, it was a really insightful thought for me because I don't, I do anything on my TikTok business. Um, and I don't, I mean, I put, I put my true personality forward. I'm not a jerk on there or anything. And I'm not suggesting anyone, you know, be a jerk on any platform, but just, just, thinking about yourself and having fun with something is key as well. Okay, so maybe you guys are inspired by this. Maybe you're not. Maybe you're like, oh, I have so many great ideas. This is awesome. This is how I built my business. I've been doing this for six and a half years. Um, and income disclaimer, insert income disclaimer. I do this very part-time. I have a full-time job and I've been able to build a decent income even though I'm doing this very part-time. 
Um, so don't ever think that you need a million hours in the day in order to do this well or efficiently or to turn it into something big. So take some action. After this call, what does your calendar look like? What does it look like for the next month? What are you gonna be inviting to? Like starting Monday, are you gonna be inviting to the Clean Week Challenge? Are you starting something else on Monday? You've gotta make sure to start your month on the right foot, especially with Team Cup coming up. And then be bold, start reaching out. The absolute worst thing that someone can say is no. And then who cares? Like, okay, no problem, who cares? I have to tell you recently, um, there's a girl I know that does this, like it's called four-legged running and it's like a dog rescue running program. And I follow her on TikTok and she just launched this amazing fitness planner. And I was like, listen, you know, I've been following you forever. And she's, I consider her a friend. Um, like I know her and I'm really nervous to reach out and ask, but like, you know, have you ever considered coaching? And she's like, oh, she's like, I love it. And I used to do it, but I guess she does fitness in her full-time job too. And they consider it like a conflict of interest, but I felt, so she said no, but she was like, I'm happy to support you. And I'm happy to, you know, if anyone's interested, point them in your direction. But it felt good to like reach out and have that genuine conversation. I sent it in a voice memo, right? I didn't send a canned message, but I've, it's been like itching away at me. Like I should really invite her, but I'm nervous. And I'm really glad I did. And it gave me like a little bit of confidence, even though she said, no, you should always go for no. The more no's you get, the more yeses you're going to get. So um, I will stop my share. I have about five minutes for questions before Karen gets on. Do you guys have any questions? Do you have that slideshow somewhere where we can look? Yeah, I can upload it to the team page. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Did I put you guys to sleep? That was good, Jill. I always love that presentation. I've seen it like a lot and I always get something new out of it. So thanks friends. You. And you just guys to let you guys know, I run my business much differently, but like we're consistent. That's the number one, like those that's where we've been consistent. And I invite like a crazy person, probably spend a lot more hours doing that than some other things that Jillian does. She's just super organized in all of her things. I'm, I'm less organized. But I think if you're consistent and you're doing the vitals, whatever works for you. And the fact that Jillian has those groups and let's, and we can all run them together and do them together. And you have that to work on is awesome. I think the thing I've been learning because I had like a rough two months um, is like the prejudging and planting seeds. I would just message a person and she's like, oh my God, I was just talking to my ex about how I've been watching my old coworker and I need to join her. And thank you so much for reaching out. And I, I was like super nervous to message her. It's just, I, you just have to get over yourself and you don't, you don't, you think, you know, but you don't like, I just have to pr pretend I don't know anything and just put my blinders on and go. And I know if I keep showing up that six months down the line, a year down the line, I'm going to help more people um, and not get so caught up with like December and January being like a disaster. <laughs> yeah. Don't ever, we, I think we already just, you're, you prejudge people prejudging you, right? Like you think you know how someone's going to feel about you, but you probably actually don't, right? Like I, I was literally talking to this, I'm in this like really hardcore mentorship and it's one-on-one -on -one and like the homework is insane. And she was like, you do that all the time. She was like, you have no idea how that person feels. Just ask them. And this isn't about like, I'm not talking about sales, but like, this is something else. Like, just ask them if you, if you don't know, like someone said something to me and she's like, are you sure that's what they meant? Or are you just like making that up in your head? <laughs> that's what they meant. Right. Um, and I don't, I don't prejudge people. So why do I think people prejudge me? And to your point, Jessica, the really important thing is that I say this all the time. Listen, I buy a lot of stuff online from people that sell bags and candles and all this different stuff. But the difference in what we do and what they do is that it's not an emotional decision to buy a candle or a mascara. It's an emotional decision to say like, I need to change my life. I need to get healthy. Maybe your goal is weight loss. Maybe your goal is weight gain. Whatever the goal is, it's a personal goal. No one runs a support group for you after you buy that candle. They just don't. Our work starts 
after someone joins us. Well, and I think Always. another thing to remember is just because somebody said no six months ago doesn't mean they say no today. What'd you say about six months ago? Sorry. Is it just because somebody says no six months ago? Doesn't oh, mean definitely not. Because Dottie, how long did you say no for? <laughs> A long time. <laughs> years. Yeah. Yeah, Jessica watched me for years. I never said no because I never got I never invited. Asked her. <laughs> she scared me. <laughs> but one day I was watching Angie Belmar because I'm obsessed with morning routines. And I was like, who is this broad? What is she doing? What's, oh, Beachbody. And I almost signed up with her. But then I remembered Whitney and I was like, yeah, you know what? I should go to Whitney because she's my sister. And so people are watching and stalking you. I just got a message today and the girl was interested in the, like just the sampler pack, but she was like, it's just so inspiring to watch you. And pro she's probably not inspired that much by my fitness. She's probably more inspired with like me as a person and my, my just overall life. So like, you should always be putting that forward, like how freaking awesome you are. Once again, I was talking to this mentor woman and she was like, you should put like Jillian, you know, people put like, I don't know if you're on LinkedIn, people put like your name and comma, like PhD, comma, JD, comma, MBA. She's like, you should put Jillian Kaplan, comma, badass. I'm like, oh, that would go over like really well. Could you imagine? <laughs> I don't know. LinkedIn is pretty stuffy. I think people might like it. You might be surprised. Oh, um, I post TikToks on LinkedIn and they get in, I have like I mean, insane reach, like insane. I did a recruiting TikTok because we're hiring like crazy. Jillian's work TikToks are my favorite thing in the whole wide world. They are nuts. Like, and I had 40 messages from people interested and I sent them to like recruiting. I'm like, I can't actually manage this. Sorry. Like someone else is going to have to take care of this. Like I thought, I thought it was a joke, but nope. And the executives love it. They think I'm nuts, which is fine. I don't care. You're like, as long as you pay referral bonuses, I don't care. Here I don't are. care. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I know our referral bonuses are like five grand too. So cross your fingers for me. Um, okay, there she is. Karen, I'm going to stop recording this. But if you guys have any questions, let me know and I will put. Um, oh, should I go grab my wine? Yeah, wine time. I'm going to stop the recording, Karen. <laughs>